The Latent Phase of Labor, a presentation of the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. The latent phase extends from the initiation of labor to the onset of the active phase, a point often referred to as the acceleration phase, in which the minimal or absent slope of latent phase dilatation begins to increase. The latent phase may normally last for many hours. Its normal limit is judged by its duration and should be considered to be about 20 hours in a nullipara and 14 hours in a multipara. During the latent phase, the cervix is prepared for the more rapid dilatation that will take place subsequently in the active phase. To accomplish this preparation, the cervix undergoes a process of rapid remodeling, the consequence of considerable biochemical activity that may have begun gradually weeks before. As a result of extensive changes in the structure and organization of its collagen and ground substance, the cervix softens, becomes thinner, more compliant, and may dilate modestly. Latent phase duration is proportional to the amount of pre-labor cervical maturation that has occurred. Heavy sedation or anesthesia may prolong the latent phase, but sometimes light relief of pain and anxiety may shorten it. Latent phase duration is not related to the amount of uterine activity that is present. There is uncertainty about whether a prolonged latent phase may be associated with adverse outcomes. About 5 to 10 percent of women with a long latent phase are actually in false labor, and their uterine contractions will eventually cease. Although this is an important distinction to make, because management of false labor is expensive, inconvenient and frustrating for patient and staff, and is associated with morbidity, false labor is not reliably distinguishable from a true latent phase by clinical criteria. The cause of false labor is uncertain, but it may be a manifestation of some failure of the normal latent phase mechanism and a bellwether of dystocia. Factors associated with an abnormally prolonged latent phase include deficient prelabor or intrapartum cervical remodeling, excessive maternal analgesia or anesthesia, maternal obesity, chorioamnionitis, and possibly cephalopelvic disproportion. Management of a prolonged latent phase involves either stimulation of uterine activity with oxytocin or providing a sedative-induced period of maternal rest. Both are equally effective in advancing the labor to active phase dilatation in about 85% of cases. The choice depends on the mother's preference and her level of fatigue as well as relevant medical contingencies. Oxytocin is preferred if there is any medical or social reason not to prolong the labor. The response to oxytocin is generally rapid, and at least 75% of those who respond will have done so within a few hours. Therapeutic rest has a different success profile, but within a few hours of the patient awakening, most labors have entered the active phase. Very few patients with a prolonged latent phase are cured by amniotomy. Prolonged latent phase is often innocuous, but it is associated with a higher incidence of fetal malpositions, cephalopelvic disproportion, and cesarean or operative delivery. Some studies suggest it is also associated with subsequent active phase labor disorders, 
which may themselves confer risk. Based on the best available evidence, we have created an algorithm to help guide the clinician in dealing with the prolonged latent phase of labor disorder. The approach involves first making the diagnosis with accuracy and then evaluating for obstetric or medical problems requiring prompt delivery. If there is justification to hasten delivery, administer oxytocin. If not, evaluate for potentially treatable etiologic factors and assess the patient's preference. Continuing fetal and maternal monitoring is important regardless of whether oxytocin or therapeutic rest is chosen as treatment.